toughest strong man in history, right here. It's not a beauty contest, it's a strong man. So a very warm welcome to you joining us on the Giants live podcast and a very special guest today indeed. She is uh, one of the strongest women in the world. In fact, she was the world's strongest woman in 2021. She pulled up short this year for a little injury and saved herself for the world's strongest nation contest where she was a true star for Team Britain. She is multiple times Welsh champion in strong woman, multiple times grip world champion in fact, she's got a list as long as my arm of all the things she's won. Former rugby player, uh, now lives in Liverpool, formerly of Wales, Rebecca Roberts. Hi. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, cool to have you here. Thank you very much. Oh, it's awesome to be here. Yeah. Tired, I guess. You've just come yeah. back from America. I got back from America yesterday. So, yeah, yeah that was just an incredible weekend. Um but yeah, tired now. Did you meet Arnold? Yes. And I've had a photo <laughs> with Arnold. That is the highlight of the weekend. <laughs> he was cool? Yeah, he was awesome. He shook my hand and called me a beast. <laughs> <laughs> you beast. <laughs> that was your Arnold accent. Oh, God. I'm not going to try. <laughs> yeah, Big Gab. Our, our other Welshman on this podcast so far, Big Gab, he, he does a good, a good Arnold. <laughs> but... Uh, how was the whole experience then? It's quite something, the whole Columbus thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's just insane, like, the amount of people that are there as well and, like, performing in front of a big crowd that are live-streamed in front of thousands of people, just like the Nations Comp. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was just... It was incredible to be a part of, like, another big step forward for the women's sport and strongman. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it's... I guess, yeah, it was interesting you say that the World's Strongest Nation event, um, an event, of course, that we, we put on in Liverpool, which must have meant a lot for you, quite quite frankly, being a, a Liverpudlian now, sort of, yeah. aren't you? you just call like a little bit adopted by, like, the whole Liverpool crowd, so... Yeah. But, yeah, like, that was just insane. Like, all of my family and friends came, and it was just... To Liverpool? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So, so did all my family, and, and they were in love with you. <laughs> my daughter thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, finally, we were doing um, Strong Woman, you know, part of the, the whole event, and it... For me, I think you guys were the stars of the show, undoubtedly. Um, you know, I don't want to put the, the fellas down, of course, because they were pretty awesome as well. And it was, it was just a great, great day, which we're going to do again, yeah. of course, uh, later on this year in 2023. It has to be done. I think that's going to be a regular. Yeah, it was just insane, like, the amount of positivity that we got from it. Like, the meet and greet at the end, our queue were longer than the men. Like, and that meant a lot to me, that the people were adopting of the female side. Like, yeah. Because obviously, there's a lot of, I wouldn't say stigma, but there's a lot of, like, oh, were the women going to be as popular as the men and things like that. And, like, that nation's comp proved that the women can be up there with the men. We just need the exposure and we need the same opportunities as the men and the sport will grow. So, you're... So. you're 28 yes i'm 48 right so uh when i started strong man in my very very early 20s even late teens as it were i think uh strong man was not cool at all strong man was the kind of end of peer you know guy in a slightly saggy lycra outfit you know who who <laughs> bodybuilding was infinitely cooler I would say it's swap round now. That's my belief, anyway. Yeah. And so trust me, it's it's you. You guys, I think, are going to be the the mold breakers. The people will will stereotypes will be will be knocked down, and and all of your personality and charisma will come out. And that's why I wanted to get you on this podcast because I find you just a fascinating character. Uh, um, you know, you're such a warm, friendly person, and and. Yet, of course, you've had a lot of hurdles to go through in life, undoubtedly. Yeah, we all have, but your hurdles have been bigger than a lot of others. <laughs> it's, it's no, definitely, I've been through a lot in my life, but now I just kind of use it as a positivity in a way. I just kind of spin 
kind of spin it around basically and use it to help people through hard times that they might be going through mm. um so yeah like i've had a lot of messages from people that say that they've been through similar things and seeing me crushing it out on the stage and seeing me kind of getting past bad things that have happened has like mm. inspired them to carry on themselves and that just means a lot to me so so it's an awful early morning here we're an awful cold podcasting suite it's a, and you 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 know you, you're probably on probably 3 a.m for you having been on american time recently but <laughs> so you know but i'm going to touch on a few things anyway um uh you know paul savage you know the number one how can we not mention him and you know um what a guy i couldn't help but 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 we get him. He was an as an event exactly. organizer. He, uh, you, you know, your coach, your soulmate. Is that fair to say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, passed away recently, um, very recently. And that this is this could be a bit of a tricky one to talk about. But I think in an inspirational way, he was the guy who really inspired you to be who you are. And and I think um, I, for one, would like just to know a bit more about him. What, what, how did you guys meet, and how did he? How did he get you? Does he? Is it fair to say he really brought you into strongman? Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, so we met in twenty sixteen, and we met on Plenty of Fish. And technically, actually, our first date was in the gym because um, he firstly is that is that, is that an app? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did not. Yeah. A dating website. <laughs> I, 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 my wife and I met on Match.com. That was the thing back then. But I don't know. I played the fish. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was just um, a dating website. And he firstly just agreed to be my coach. Like, because I was very, very overweight um, in a bad way. Like, I didn't have any kind of muscle or anything. Um, and he was just like, yeah, I'll help you lose weight. And then it kind of, like, blossomed. And within six weeks, I'd moved in with him. And then within that time, he basically said, like, do you know what? You've got the potential to, to do well in the sport that I do. And I'm like, oh, what sport do you do? And he goes, strongman. And I'm like, what's strongman? And he introduced me to, like, the local strongman gym. And we went and uh, I was awful when I first started. I couldn't clean, like, a, a 20 kilo, I think it was 25 kilo log. Like, my techniques were all over the place. Um. But I entered my first competition within five months of, of meeting him, and that was UK Strongest Woman, and I won that competition. So we met in the May 2016. <laughs> That's a pretty good start. In the September, I was UK Strongest Woman, so it was just... And what other, any what names were there that year? Any any other names that you're still competing that... Um... Um, no, I don't think so. You just bought um... you wiped the floor, crushed them, yeah. <laughs> and then disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> and was, that, was that Liverpool you met then? Um, yeah. Yeah. So he 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 he's a scouser. What well, was scouser? He is a scouser, right? Well, he was born in Warrington. Warrington, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit far out from the. Okay, world. okay. Uh, I'm I'm not very really good at accents around that part of the world, to be really honest. So and he was a strong man himself, right? Yeah. So he competed more on like a local level, and um, so he did do like northern qualifiers for England's strongest man and and things like that, um. But he was very much, he was built for it, but he kept getting injured. It was almost like he had a glass back. So every time he'd try and prep for a competition, his back would kind of give out. I know the feeling. So he kind of, he put his strongman to the side to focus on me. Um, he told me, like, within weeks of his first meeting, within five years, I'll make you world's strongest woman. And it was the fifth year that I became world's strongest woman. Like he literally just dedicated his life to making like as like a strength team. Like we called ourselves Team Gains. Like so, yeah. Like it was just an amazing seven years that we had. Wow. Yeah. And of course, he he passed away. Was it the heart attack? Was it? Yeah. So he was diagnosed with heart failure in March last year, um, and he was in hospital for like two weeks. Really? I did, I did not know that. Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that. He seemed so robust. Well, that's the thing. Like, his heart was improving. Like, the efficiency of his heart had doubled since March. Um, but it was just like, it was a complete shock when it happened. Mm. But... Yeah, no, it still is a bit, isn't it? 
still is a bit. Yes, yeah, so, uh, we keep talking about present tense and then past tense. It's very difficult, isn't it? Mm. Um, but uh, it, I guess it, it, and all of the things he did to inspire you, uh, and and how he, he really, many ways, I think he, he, you feel he, he helped create you, the, the you now, right? It's, it's, yeah, definitely. And you, you, you're quite keen to pass that back to everybody, aren't you? Yeah, because when I met him, I'm not going to lie, I was suicidal. I was in a very bad place. Um, I was just recovering mentally from being raped in Liverpool. Um, and I'd only just got through the court case for that um, about six months before I'd met him. So my self-esteem was at an all-time low. I didn't feel like I had anything to live for. And Paul gave me that. So he did more for me than people would ever really know. He just gave me my life and he he gave me something to live for. He gave me something to be passionate about and he helped me find my calling in life. So you, you sent me that text not long after he passed away when I sort of sent you a message and um of course when you lose somebody you know, I I'd lost my brother, who was my best friend, and I, I sent that said that to you and said, Sir uh, Time is a great healer. Though some wounds will never heal, of course it's uh, you can you can you know, but the bandage will eventually get on there. But it's uh, uh, you must always just think positively about them. And and but when you told me that story, I I, I remember putting down my glasses and like, that's a, jeez, that's a whole different level of, um, and you indeed were the one who had to try and help him back from, it was a, anyway, maybe we shouldn't even go into that, but the. That the, took a while for the ambulance to arrive and all that. I mean, it's just an extraordinary story. And I'm glad you, you're now the person you are. You can take strength from it in many ways because that's all he would have wanted. And that's what he gave you. you know, and that's that... why I'm determined now to carry it on, not just for me, but for him as well, because it was him that gave me this strength, both mentally and physically. Mm, well, I think, let me just say this from all of the Strongman family, you were all here. Always, and um, and I think it's, uh, you know, you must know that. You do know that. You don't even have to question it. You know, we're, we're, we're you know, we're, we're big, big fans of everything you you do and everything you will do. And, and it's, um, yeah, I'm sure you, you there's still much more to do in his honour. And let's move on then to the next uh, question from the past, really. How did you get into sort of sport in general? B being, I mean, the obvious one is how tall you are. What yeah. what was the first sport you got into? So you are how tall? Um, I'm six foot four. Six <laughs> foot four. How many people have you met? Women, obviously, who who actually go eye to eye with you or taller. I've met one woman that's six foot five. Um, we used to call her Titch. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was she played rugby with me, so that was one of the sports that I used to do, but. When I first started in sport, it was more athletics. Yeah. So I used to do like 200 meter sprints and on the shot put. They were kind of like my sports. School goal, so, school goal stuff. How, yeah. how, how, how far do you take it? Club or? or, or? Um, I was a national champion in shot put. Um, and then I came third nationally um, in 200 meter sprint. That's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. I, 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 Jeff Capes, little known fact, but Jeff Capes was a... Uh, and it's tremendous 200 meter runner as a schoolboy my old man remembers him jumping two meters and of course there wouldn't have been no there probably would have been landing mats so it might have been Fosbury flop no it wouldn't have been and it wouldn't have been. Dick Fosbury hadn't come along he would have been jumping two meters high at English schoolboys Capesy with his, the scissor kick into sand which is quite something isn't it yeah. but it just goes to show you how yeah how how certainly I think the strong man, strong woman, you need great athleticism first and foremost. Size is one thing, but athleticism is worth far more. And that's when you told me that, I was like, it all makes sense now, right? When you combine the two together, it's a killer combo, isn't it? Yeah, because a lot of people think, oh, she's big, she can't move, but I, I can move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't be taking my phone off the table, I'll be charging you down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, st you still could think you could shift. How would you shift over like 200 now? That, to no be problem. honest, I think I'd do really well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Especially with the extra power and stuff, I might be a little bit heavier, but I think. Probably yeah, at the start, you probably power away well, but. Yeah. Yeah. 
probably a bit, yeah, probably find it a bit tiring by the 150 mark. <laughs> if you haven't trained for it in a while, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's um. So moving on from from athletics, then you, you, I guess you were kind of retired from that, but sometime at the end of school and shifted. Yeah. Did you found rugby before the end of school? Um, so I found rugby when I first started university. So I was going around the freshers' fair, and I think they they saw a big tall girl, and they're like, "Oh, we'll have her. We'll give her a leaflet." And I just thought, "Why not? I'll just go and kind of see what it's all about." And they were a lovely bunch of girls. So you're in Liverpool. You're in Liverpool at uni, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you got to Liverpool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So just I went to university to do a forensic psychology. So that was a quite oh, a good yeah. degree. Yeah. Did you finish spraying with forensic psychology or yeah. did you shift? You did. You did, really? Oh, wow. I went to university to do psychology, not forensic. And I did not finish with psychology because I, I kind of, yeah, slowly moved on. To, in Scot I went to a Scottish uni where you can... Anyway, that's my my failures are, are not worth discussing. Wow, that's awesome. What was forensic psychology like? Just to cut in on that one for a sec. Oh, it was great. Like, getting behind, like, the minds of criminals and why people do things and like nature versus nurture and all that kind of debate like it was i did it for two years psychology but not forensics so did you did you go into into sort of like online forensics and all that kind of stuff i'm reading a book on online yeah. forensics right now actually so I, a lot of online and a lot of basically like crime scene like investigation type thing so you look at a crime scene you look at the psychology of why this person might have done this instead and like build a profile from that um, for criminals and then the other aspect of it is basically studying criminals studying murderers and um, just kind of like deciding if there is something that kind of creates them mm. um, do you think it is more but you know uh, nature or nurture for these things it's got to be got to be more no, uh, yeah. nurture isn't it nurture more than anything more than anything the, the environment you're brought up in split two twins upon chances are one can be a bad egg and one can be hair yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess th that, taking us back to your sport then, and I, I, I always think life is little a series of little successes is what builds up confidence, isn't it? Um, you know, don't you don't try and overstep too much too early. It's, of course, what a good coach can do with you. And But h how did you go on in rugby? Did, it, did, it, did you, yeah. you find it... Um, but did you just walk in and smash it? <laughs> Was it all right? Do you do you play for this, the university team then? Yeah, so yeah. I ended up captain in my team. Oh, you did? Um, okay. Very early on, they uh, gave me the nickname Lenny. So um, I've, I've forgotten what the book's called now. Um, there's, there's a book. And what was the character? What was the character then? You were... uh, Lenny was a gentle giant. Of mice and of men. Of mice and men, that's it. And, um, yes, yes, yes. I yes. read <laughs> at school. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I was meant to read it and did a cheat sheet instead. <laughs> but basically, Lenny was this kind of like big, tall character that like killed a rabbit by accident. Right. Like, and basically, what I did in one of the first trainer sessions was tackle the girl so hard that she never came back by accident. Right. <laughs> right. So that was my nickname through <laughs> rugby. I'm so sorry, poor little person. <laughs> She's. I, I, I was telling this with my wife. I don't think, and I, I you know what you got. For some reason, I always think of airports. I've seen some massive men in airports. Always airports bigger than you know, even bigger than Hap Thor or or you know, there's a couple of guys six ten, six eleven. But I was thinking, how many seven foot? There's a thing I've seen a couple of real seven footers, and I was thinking, okay, female. I think I one you always often seen basketball teams, and I remember an American basketball team women's. I was thinking, is, was were any of them even taller than Rebecca? What, what, what is what is the if there's a bell curve, right? Of you know humanity, what what percent do you think six foot four is for a woman? Oh geez, like hundred. <laughs> it's got to be brighter than ninety nine point yeah. nine something, isn't it? If you've only ever met one person, you think we walked past who that was taller than <laughs> you? Uh, they're like. We always joke that I was sped like Miracle Grow as a kid. Like, uh, who in your family was? Was there any idea who in your family was? Was side? I remember it was from? six foot two, and <laughs> that explains it then, right? Okay, and how about how about her ancestors? Were there any? God, I don't know. Like, cause she was adopted into her family, so we don't really know much about my mum's side. 
Um, and you don't astro- have you like done six foot. Your dad was six foot, so he he was bringing you down a bit. Yeah. <laughs> a six two, mum. Wow, that's extraordinary. I, I mean, I definitely the the mum size. It's a big yeah, but anyway. So, have you ever done ancestry dot com or one of these things? That's fascinating to see, wouldn't it? What do you think? What do you think? Where do you think your your, your genes would lie? Any idea? God, somewhere up in Scandinavia or somewhere. Probably, yeah, uh, like with all the Norwegians and Dutch people, like Dutch, Dutch, Dutch tends to be tall. Massive fellas, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, funny enough, I did one of my one, and it's quite interesting how it, how how many different variations you have. Yeah, uh, I remember Eddie did one. He was four percent African. That was quite an interesting one. Eddie, all he was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My mum was four percent Caucasus Mountains, which is like Chinatria, which was kind of like what? But, uh, it's quite weird. Yeah, yeah. Amazing how you have the mix of you realize how how short a snapshot in time Great Britain is when yeah. you, all the peoples moved over. Um, anyway, my love of genealogy is a bit. Let's not get into that. Um, Rugby then. So you you played how, how many years of the of rugby? Did you ever did you ever then do you try representative rugby? Did you ever get invited to any of that? Um, club I rugby. Also, I played for like Waterloo Ladies, which was another kind of club, and they had players that played for like England, Scotland, and Wales as well. So that was the next like natural wow. step for me. Mm. Um, but I had a really bad injury where I couldn't um walk for six months. I couldn't do a sit up. I remember walking around Asda one day and I had to sit on the floor in Asda and I was crying because I couldn't physically get around the supermarket. What happened? Um, I was tackled by two girls and I went flying and I tore ligaments and did like nerve back damage in my lower back and slipped two discs. So it basically ended my rugby career. Like there was no... So the lower back pain is just awful and like proper debilitating lower back pain. Yeah. What, what, did you feel it in your legs much? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was getting sciatica down my legs and stuff as well. And I was on morphine for six months. I was I was part of the codeine club at Hammersmith Hospital for many years. <laughs> this was, a, I had a, yeah, anyway, facet operation. Did you ever, did they ever talk you into any operations with that? They did try, but I just, I'm a believer in like movement is medicine. So I wanted to like rehabilitate so it myself. So correct. Rather than having well to go under the knife. Well done you. Well done you. Do you know it so much depends on who you do you know what I, I when I did my back in right after right after Bob Slay, when I did Bob Slay and really hurt my back, Bob Slay really badly in an accident. And I saw for the best guy like in, in South Kensington, Mr. Chiropractor to the stars. I mean wait, he spent more time putting up his pictures of stars on the wall than he did chiropractic and he and he and he took never pick another way up off the floor your back is appalling i was like what it, it, amazing and then you go see another guy you know there was in the end pilates do you ever try pilates go do pilates pilates is the most power pilates power it's gonna be power in there but it, as, as i found it in 45 minutes changed my life crazy. it's crazy isn't it what can make you bad can make you good and it's it's movement undoubtedly yeah like it's just basically just changed my life like lifting weights everyone's like oh it'll hurt your back but my back's never been better <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean and i yeah. did a 600 pound deadlift last week like 600 pounds what was it kilos then was it exactly was it actually was it 600 or was it uh, over or was well it was 601 so it was like 273 <laughs> <laughs> and there was definitely more in the tank so it's exciting to see and there has to be more the time because the girl, the girls' game's moving on, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, uh, we've got Gabby Dixon, um, all kinds of you. Um, Andrea's pulling big weights. Well, who's, 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 how many girls are actually ahead of you in that, in the max game at the moment? Um, well, British girls, you've got Lucy and Andrea. You've got Lucy. What's she called? Three kilos. She's done more in the gym as well. Yeah. Um, you've got Olga who's pulled the 290 deadlift recently. Yeah, Victoria yeah. Long, she's coming up to like near 300. So there's a lot of crazy deadlifters. When I first started the sport, if you had a 200 kilo deadlift, you were elite. But now it's like if you've got 600 pounds, you're up there. Like, do you know what I mean? It's crazy how that's developed by over 70 kilos. I, think, like but, but 
I think it's also fair to say our, our our knowledge of what we believe women can do is going to have to change a little bit. Here's, here's a small like side story. So I, I'm, I'm I'm terrible with this kind of stuff. But I my university thesis right in the end I, I didn't finish the psychology. I, I, I moved over to physiology really, and I did it on on you know the charts for ki- bell curve charts yeah. for kids heights and weights right. That's why I'm mildly obsessed by these things. And I, and I challenged the, the traditional curves to see where we were at in Britain. They were done in like the 1940s, late 40s and early 50s by like basically post-war kids. So they, they just weren't right. They, they weren't, they're actually, they're, they were actually wrong. Mal- malnourished. Yeah, yeah. They were, and often it makes kids look a beast. That's the problem nowadays. So kids look, you know, you, you go into a, a shop and, and all of the clothing stuff is still, you know, if you go and buy a child, a six-month child, like clothes for a six-month child, often it'll be it'll be like too small already. And it, you know, I think they've ch- changed a lot of that now in, in retail. But anyway, so where was I going with that? <laughs> and anyway, I was talking about yes, the abilities of women, and the, the thing that caught me was Gabby Dixon and yourself shocked me. I think shocked the world in what you could do grip wise and Paul had told me more than one occasion you will see you'll see yeah. you should pay attention to it I was like yeah 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 so I know I'll tell you exactly what because upper body women's upper bodies is going to be 40% weaker and 90% of, of the strength and lower all this kind of stuff from physiology but I mean Gabby were you fourth and Gabby was second out of all out of you know like some world class yeah. grip guys there as well is that right? It was only yeah. Felix who managed to beat Gabby, and then you know you were just behind. Did you, did you get the minute or just shy of the minute? Um, I think I got like a minute and three or something. Like that. So let, let me just say this now, right? That Hercules hold was the same weight for men and women, and yes, there once was Magnus and Kaz had a Hercules hold, a famous one, and we did adjust it so it was lighter. But it sure as heck wasn't there. It was the same thing. I was really that did my totally did my head in. And, and do you think how? What do you think that women? Do you think women could potentially match lower body strength? Or how, how do you see the whole? How, how close do you can you run men in, in most things then? God, like I don't think we'd ever be able to match like the, the strongest men in in really anything. Apart from my calves, my calves are actually stronger than I would say. Like I'd be able to meet, beat like a lot of world's strongest man competitors in a calf race. <laughs> I wouldn't see it, and I, I, I wouldn't doubt. I wouldn't doubt it either anymore. Yeah. I, I really wouldn't doubt it because there's got to be certain physiological things that women, you know, men and women are built to do things slightly differently. Yeah, calves. I wonder what calf. I don't have to think about that one for. How can, we, how can we ever test that? Calves. Really? How, do, how can we prove it? What can we do? <laughs> what can we do? I guess the car phrase, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hercules Hall was a fascinating... Hercules Hall was quite entertaining, though. Quite Not so entertaining a car phrase, is it? We'll have to think about... Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, grip-wise, though, like, my grip's probably... Not to kind of shoot my own horn kind of thing, yeah. but uh, my grip's, like... Probably better than a lot of the world's strongest men competitors. Um, I've lifted the Thomas Inch dumbbell. I, I know it is. I know, I know that is. a lot of competitors that world's strongest so men have lifted got. the Thomas Inch dumbbell. Yeah. Do you really? What that? How much is that again? That's seventy. Yeah, Seventy-eight kilos. So it was a, a level lift with like a couple. And, of and it's a, the three-inch. How? Okay, so I, I I bought a couple of those off of um. Uh, I think we'll put one off God of Grip or something, and another one off of First Strength Shop, and the, they're slightly different dimensions. I think they both sort of claim to be Circus Dumbbell or Thomas, yeah. but they're they're sort of what is the actual thickness? Is I thought they were meant to be narrower, the Thomas Inch ones. Did you find your hand could get into it easily? Just about. Just yeah, because I've got quite big hands for a woman. You could pick the seventy-eight kilo one up with one hand. Okay, so I I absolutely cannot. Not really. <laughs> uh, here's one for you, right? Go find a, a video by Luke Fulbrook. Uh, he tested loads of people at the Arnolds on the grip crusher thing. And I, I think I came second 
beat Eddie. Beat a load of them, actually. It was only, it was the, who, oh, God, what's his name? Yeah, who's the Welsh strong man again? The, the, the sumo guy. Oh, Ben Brunning. Ben Brunning was the number one guy at it. I think I was second. I couldn't, I can't lift that one up. I don't know what it is. Of course, there's different types of strength in the hand, but, wow, that's really impressive. Could well, you pick was... up and hot and stand and hold for yeah. a split second, yeah? With a proper level lift as well, so. I take my imaginary hat off to you. Dang, I could do a 60 something. And 70, I think it was a 72 when I got as well, which is kind of. <laughs> it kind of goes. How do you train for it? I'm going to have to train for it now, try and, try and get, catch up with you. God, to be honest, I didn't actually train for it. You just yeah. slapped a mitt on it. I was doing like Hercules hold training for, for the Giants Live. <laughs> So that was basically what my grip training was, but Paul again was a grip specialist. Could he do it? So yeah, he could do it very easily. Really? Yeah. So, you, so, and do you, so therefore, do you think you can train for it? Well, the Paul couldn't have done it without ever doing it, but you must be able to because you can train for it. It's a stupid thing to say. Yeah, so a lot of like thick handle work, a lot of rolling handle kind of things. And see that, that that's my the, the, my natural rather well, than my, my my sensible. If I thought about it, uh, belief came out there. My my grip is, oh, I don't bother training grip, it's natural. But yes, you absolutely can train grip up. And it's really easy to incorporate into your training as well. So, like, when you're warming up for your deadlift, just throw some fat grips into the bar. Like, do you know what I mean? So you're mm. not having to use straps. And, is that what you and, do, is it? Yeah, and then move on to double overhand. Mm. And then, like, in between sets, do some grippers. So if you're resting from squats, just do some grippers while you're sat resting and... Like plate pinch. Do you think you can work grip too hard? I think so, yeah, but I think there's the right balance. So mm. just, the only reason I say that is because Felix, I think it was before the run up hall when he kinda just didn't have a good day that time. He was he was like a did like just over a minute, I think, maybe which for him at you know, he was knocking out one thirty. He'd come down here. Do you remember the time, Nev? He did. And we didn't really talk about I, it. Then. I wasn't there. You were. I there. saw. I saw the video. The here. only reason we know it was absolutely correct is we've got a CCTV, yeah. and Dash was like, "It was. It was really long, guys." And we went and checked the CCTV, and it was like a minute and forty something, and then he put it down. So the, the world record, he could annihilate it. If he, but some grip. It's funny, isn't it? Because you think you can't, almost can't overwork grip and calves. I think you obviously can. You can. You obviously can, and you you know you have to give that time to rest as well. Grip tends to fry your central nervous system a lot more than a lot of things a lot of people give credit for. Really? Yeah. So if you kind of overwork your grip, um, so it doesn't come back for a while. You got to give it a. Yeah. So I'll do like my heaviest grip work like two weeks out from the competition just to kind of let that rest. So right, that far away for grip. Well, you do that for deadlift, like probably further for deadlift, just about. But nowadays, the, think, the thinking keeps changing, doesn't it? You really speaking to Andy Bolton. It's it's amazing the, the amount of theory of how different it was to when I was blindly battering my body up until the last minute. Yeah, yeah. In fact, you know, if you ask Kaz, what it was, Kaz's biggest mistake was overtraining all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, heard a few cast stories that have shocked me about his training. <laughs> the number one, one cast story I'll, I'll never forget, just a, you may you take away wee bites. You always just do 50 reps on a shrug at the end of every session. As a, as a young man, I then went away and just did that. <laughs> did, well, did I tell you, your traps will grow. <laughs> They're like Janashians. Like. <laughs> Janashians are bizarre, isn't it? Like but it's, it's, his dad has them as well. It's actually a, it's a genetic thing. It's weird. Huh? Hey, Shred fans. I think it's a pretty well-known fact that Giants Live and the best strongmen in the world are rather partial to picking up a used car or okay, two. Here we go. But we must admit that our cars are never under eight years old. And as for the engines, well, they don't even have engines. That is so close. Wow, that's However, at Haycar, you buy only the best used cars on the market. All cars come with a warranty, 10-day money-back guarantee, and they're sourced from selected dealers only. Look at the speed! Wow! Unlike our beat-up bangers, every car is under 8 years old and has less than 100,000 miles 
on the clock. But I'm pretty sure it'll be a world record. You could browse the range at heycar.co.uk or why not go to the App Store or Google Play to download the Heycar app. That's spelled H-E-Y-C-A-R dot C-O dot U-K. See? Strong men can spell. Um, so let, let's move on to the modern day strong woman very much because a big show coming up. Uh, another big show, lots of big shows for you. Uh, having just done the Arnold's World's Strongest Nation, we'll have World's Strongest Woman at the end of the year through the official Strongman Games uh, or officialstrongman.com. But Britain's Strongest Woman. So tell us a bit about it. You're, you're obviously going to be a part of the lineup. Yeah, it's just another incredible step forward for the sport that for women, we're going to have our own Giants live show mm -hmm. um, in September. So I'm really excited to to hopefully compete in that and win it. Win it, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it looks like we're going to have um, Donna, Andrea. Um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, potentially it'll be open with Rihanna as well. <laughs> it'll be mad. There's some, some big names there. It'll be It'd be, yeah, we still have to decide on the events, but um, what, event, what events would you hope for? Well, let's take it. <laughs> Hercules Hall. Right. Hall. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's pretty fancy. Just for fun. If you had a fantasy fantasy contest, what do you think you could, you know? God, there's got to be some kind of yoke or farmers in there. And... Yeah, farmers for you, yeah, for sure. No log press. I don't like log press. We don't, we're not friends. Viking press would be fun. What's your best log press? Um, I did 115 kilo doubles um, a few weeks ago, so it is coming along slowly. Yeah. So we're going to be at the Doncaster Dome, the Donny Dome, which is uh, near near Sheffield, for those who maybe want to fly it. Uh, so, yeah, you can, uh, or basically right in the middle of England, really, a little dot in the centre of England, Doncaster. And it's, it's certainly where we've done a lot of, it used to be the home of Britain's Strongest Man before we moved to Sheffield, um, you know, Fly DSA Arena, which has probably changed names again, but the big one. And no doubt we'll, we'll hopefully, touch wood, we'll, 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 we'll build this one up from the Donny Dome. So I remember actually in 2016, the World's Strongest Woman and World's Strongest Man Masters was in the Doncaster Dome. So that was the first major competition that I actually went to watch. You were watching in the crowd? Oh, bless you. Really? Yeah, yeah. How many years was that again? 2016. Nick Best won the men's. Yeah, and then Donna Moore won the women's. That was her first oh, World's Strongest Woman title. Yeah. That was first right. Nick Best stayed at my house <laughs> for a few days. My kids loved him. He was great. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good dude. Yeah, that was that was still some fun shows. Only twelve hundred seats available. That's that's uh, also true. It's not um, it is not like the big, bigger Sheffield Arena. But once we've um, hopefully we can we can, I know we're going to sell that no problem. And it's got actually we've got England's strongest man, the next day, uh, shall be another interesting one to do. And it's Scott, we need an England's most proper England's strongest man, um, has been um. Other alternative generic brands out there, but it's time for a, <laughs> to keep the, the official. official, the official, the official, official. Uh, yeah, so um, it's going to be a big weekend of strength. I'm sure Nev has dubbed it something. What have we called it, Nev? The uh, weekend uh, of strength. The Giants Live weekend of strength. <laughs> the Giants Live. <laughs> how long did we have? How many hours did we think about that one? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Point three. <laughs> of a minute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. The Giants Live weekend of strength. And uh, actually, if you want to. Keep an eye on it. The official strongman.com is, is very much um, the driving force. And we're going to be doing a lot more of these contests uh, around the world. We're going to try and build up live streams from everywhere, really. Um, so uh, what other contests are you doing this year out of interest? Um, I've heard on the grapevine that uh, Rogue are going to be doing the adding the females onto the lineup for the Rogue Invitational. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be pretty awesome, hopefully, if that's can be a part of that. Uh, especially, 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 if they, they, especially if they do that prize money. Out of interest, has there ever been a difference in prize money between the men and women's CrossFit out of interest? There hasn't ever, no. They've always good. So I wonder if they'll just drop straight in at equality there. Hopefully. That'll yeah, be a nice yeah. payday. Yeah. Was the, uh, was the Arnold's prize money, did that come in at God, the men and women's? I don't know. 
So yeah. not even you came second, didn't you? She didn't she even know what you won. <laughs> <laughs> no. What a surprise that is. Have our most holiday in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a lot, you know. <laughs> they, 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 they're pretty good on prize money. Yeah, old Arnie gets his checkbook out. He is. No yeah. problem. Big Arnold, yeah. Well, how adventurous, how tall was Arnold? God, I think he was maybe about five foot ten, something like that, five foot eleven. It's hard for you to know at your height, of course. <laughs> down. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to give on as Joe. I think he's probably. I think he's actually. Uh, he put, I think he probably once was because people shrink, don't they? I think he probably was was six one, actually. Probably is six one and a half even. Probably is down to near six foot now. It'd be a fraction under. Yeah, I remember where Stallone. I met Stallone a couple of times. Well, once anyway when I was there, back in 04 He had like Cuban heels on. <laughs> and he was still well short. He was no giant, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, and what else is coming up uh, for you? Any, any other interesting? Europe's strongest woman. Yes. So... You, you are still the reigning champion, right? Yep. So, <laughs> that'll be fun. You? It's like a three day competition yeah. that we're London. Yes. Yeah. The Excel Arena. Wow. Yeah. It's going to be big, eh? It's going to be big. OSG. An OSG. Be in West Virginia this year, so that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. OSG's yeah, shifting around again, yeah, hopefully. So uh, that'll be November. Gosh, we're going to see a lot of you. Hopefully. Yeah, indeed. Go on, to, right, give us a little a little thought um, towards, you know, how your um, your mindset is. Is, is. Are there any things that you and you and Paul ever sort of had as a little mottos or little quotes or, or, or little mantras that you live by? Have you ever, is there anything, any, you know, like, um, I don't know, whatever it is, out working the opposition, doing this, doing that, any little thoughts or, or, or things you've picked up from over the years that you say, yeah, that, that, that is a, that's a quote I live by or, or something that, yeah. I think like the main thing that I live by now is just to take up space and, don't be be me but unapologetically when I first started this That's sport right. mm -hmm. I was very much withdrawn and I wouldn't be I wouldn't go and speak to people I wouldn't be outgoing at all but I've learned to love myself and I've learned to kind of ap appreciate who I am and know what I deserve especially with this Arnold's competition over the last weekend like I was in reserve for this competition and I was I think three years ago I would not have gone out and said no I deserve to be on that stage like do you know what I mean and, and now it's kind of just take up space and know your worth so that's kind of what I live by now and it's what I will be living by for the next god knows how many years mm. will I carry on the legacy that we built the foundations mm. for that's a great yeah when you, when you first said I thought I wonder what that means take us it makes perfect sense Especially, it is. It is must. Have, it has been a unique life. Being to to have been, some would say, gifted. Whatever you you you, you don't know you're gifted. You're just born, and you were born bigger than all the other girls. It was it was <laughs> it, a, it, it and but to learn to be comfortable with it, you, you automatically imagine it, it would be the greatest thing on earth. But I guess it isn't, is it? That I was good. bullied a lot at school for being taller and bigger than other people and. Wow. I never felt like I fit in anywhere. Like, and starting stronger is the one place that I truly feel now like I am home and this is what I I have been built for. This is like my calling. And it's the first time in life actually where I feel like I fit in. So it's been really nice to have found like my community and my thing. So Yeah, yeah. One of those little, little things as a kid you put objects into. Round one, square one, little... We take all sizes. To, to <laughs> we take all sizes, all shapes, all creeds, all whatever. It's um, yeah. And, you know, it reminds me of a great thing. Um, Rob Kearney once said to me, and I, I said, "Does anyone ever, have you ever come across any anyone being homophobic towards you or anything?" He went, "No, no. It's everyone's just. It's, it's so uber macho that all anyone cares about is your numbers. What you what you lived in. He does that like." I'm not interested in that, and I thought that's wonderful. That they, 
you know, that that's that's who we're, you know, what, what I'm a part of. So I certainly feel a part of it myself very much. And uh, I think it's a great thing. So, yeah, and, um, it's great that you're, you feel the same too. Thank you very much, Rebecca. I really appreciate the chat and probably let you go off. You've got a lot of things to do today. Now you're, now you're a star. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers.